Hello, welcome back to This Week in Wrestling. Uh, the last one was this Monday, so it's only been five days since the last video, and I know a lot of people aren't watching these wrestling videos, but there are a couple who do, and so I'm continuing to do this for you guys, but also because, again, I'm still in a big wrestling kick, so it's nice to kind of talk about the stuff that I've been watching. Now, the last uh, episode of this, I was saying about, hey, tonight's Monday Night Raw, and of course, Roman Reigns is going to win the title. I didn't really believe that, but I, I did feel sure that it would be Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. Chances of Kevin Owens winning, to me, were like 10%. Big Cass, like 1.2%. Like, there was no way. Um, so I watched the, the, the match live, main event, this week's Raw. Kevin Owens versus Big Cass versus Seth Rollins and uh, Roman Reigns in a four-way elimination match. Uh, Mick Foley at ringside with the Universal Championship. The vacant belt, Stephanie there. I'm still not sure, like... Why they went with this kind of uh, the general manager of SmackDown and the commissioner of SmackDown and, and Raw? So you have this. I mean, it's, it's you know, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just interesting how we have this kind of double team uh, on kind of the authority figures on both shows. I'm still not sure where they're going with that. If they're even going anywhere with it, I don't know. The match itself was great. It was awesome. I thought Big Cass was great in the match. He's definitely not ready for it yet. Um, he's still. I, I mean, I look at him and I still think green. You know, um, but. I think there's a lot of potential with Big Cass, I do, um, and he, he didn't miss a beat in this match, he played his part pitch perfectly, I thought. Um, he was maybe a bit over the top in the opening promo of the show, uh, where Seth Rollins kind of um, insulted him and he kind of did this kind of mock, ooh, but he kind of held it for like embarrassingly long and it's just like, yeah, you need to just snip that at the end a bit there, man, And you know, but I can tell if he continues to improve uh, in the next couple of years, I think he could be a real player, but Definitely keeping with, with Enzo for now, and uh, but he more than held his own and was perfectly... Uh, everything he did in the four-way match was perfect. And then we kick into, right, who's going to who's gonna win out of these three? Um, and probably Kevin Owens will, will be being eliminated next. So the match is going on, and boom, Triple H comes out of nowhere. Pedigree's Roman Reigns on the outside. It's like, oh, God, here we go. We're, we're treading this water again. He throws Roman Reigns in the ring. Uh, and I was like, well, hey, you know, at least Roman Reigns ain't winning the belt. Seth pins Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns is out, uh, and then Triple H gets in the ring, uh, and I'm like, oh god, and then he turns around and he kicks Seth Rollins in the gut, and he pulls him in for the pedigree, and I'm like, holy fuck ton, are you kidding me? Pedigree Seth Rollins, nods to, to Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens pins Seth Rollins for the 1-2-3, we have a new Universal Champion, holy motherfucking shit, did not expect that at all. Um, I, I feel like Kevin Owens is the kind of character who can get away with this kind of a win, but I was still a little bit like, oh, that's a shame, you know, like, it would have been nice to see him win it clean, or by cheating of his own uh, devices, you know, and then Triple H kind of rips the belt off Mick Foley, and he's walking around, he's hulking his shoulders out like he normally does, you know, it's like when he opens an NXT show, and it's just him in the ring with a spotlight, just like, he's broadening his shoulders out, and he's like, this is NX, like, he just... <laughs> He just thinks he's the man, you know, and then he stares down, Mick Foley walks off, like... <laughs> I love how much Triple H loves himself. Um, Kevin Owens, new Universal Champion. Uh, it was awesome, like, really, really cool. I mean, the crowd chanting, you deserve it, it's the heel winning, you know. He really did, and uh, I think Kevin Owens is kind of like a mold breaker in the same way that Shawn Michaels was a mold breaker, in the same way that uh, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio were mold breakers in their time, and Daniel Bryan was a mold breaker in you know this recent era. Kevin Owens, we've never had a champion who looks like Kevin Owens. The only close equivalent I can think of is Mick Foley. Uh, two very different characters, but you know someone who you know Kevin Owens uh, very much looks like the Everyman. You know, uh, to the point where it was almost a joke. You know, you see a fat guy with a beard, at, uh, uh, you know, a Dodori show, you think it's Kevin Owens. Um, but, I mean, I don't think his weight in any way hinders his wrestling ability. I think he's a phenomenal wrestler, uh, and I love that he has, you know, a couple of spare tires under his, under his shirt. And the fact that he wrestles in a shirt, I mean, he, he was going to wear... Uh, like a wrestling singlet when he debuted in WWE, he thought, well, I guess they, they want me to wrestle in this. And I think, yeah, Enzo Amore walked past him and was like, well, what are you wearing that for? And he's like, well, I guess i got to wear this. He's like, oh, no, wear your shit, wear your, your shirt and that. So that's what he did, you know, and that's who he is. And I think it fits him. And I'm surprised they went with him, um, but I'm glad that they did. Uh, I hope he's not a transitional champion. I hope that's not that, that's not what they're going for. But uh, again, they've had to change all the plans with Finn Balor out. So who knows what's going to happen, uh, and whether it'll be a case of Triple H and, and Kevin Owens against I don't know. Are they going to do that thing where you know Kevin Owens will be the the, the Seth Rollins to the Triple H again, where you know Triple H is just is just helping. 
Kevin Owens through everything. Kevin Owens is very like subservient and stuff. Doesn't fit Kevin Owens' character, so I hope not. Uh, is Seth going to be the big babyface now? Is this a babyface turn for who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, but it was very cool, I have to say. Now with the belts, one thing I, I should mention is I, I'm not the biggest fan of it because if I was Kevin Owens, uh, obviously this week I would be very happy with myself, very proud. You know, I, I've won the world title, but I, I wouldn't be enough you'd want to go for that WWE Championship, you know, and, and it's hard to kind of go for that when you're on a different show, but to me, that's the that's the WWE Championship, that's the world title, uh, and whenever they do this brand split, you know, they have the two world belts, and I hate it, and, uh, you know, one always is more important than the other, depending on what they need it for, um, and so sometimes you'll have the, the Raw Heavyweight Championship mean more than the, the, the real WWE Championship that has this lineage that goes back, you know, for decades, you know, uh, you know, if, yeah, if I was Kevin Owens, I would say this is this is great, but I, I need to finish my career having at least won the WWE Championship once. The belt that Bruno San Martino held, that Hulk Hogan held, that Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H, The Undertaker, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, The Undertaker, all those people held. I think it's The Undertaker twice. That's because he's twice as good as everyone else. But yeah, um, that's the one you want to go for. Um, and, but in, on the other side of that, SmackDown, I'm very happy that it seems like we're probably going to see AJ Styles as, to me, the real WWE World Champion. That's awesome. I cannot wait for that. I really think it's going to happen uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think they should pull the trigger on it. He's hot off the, the big John Cena win. They should go with it. They're going to go with it anyway. You know, he is the, he's the best performer in the company as far as I'm concerned. And so they need to pull that trigger now. Dean Ambrose had a fine little run. I was really so happy for Dean Ambrose. really was. But um, I, I kind of soured on him a little bit after that really awkward podcast with Steve Austin. But, you know, I, I kind of agree with Austin. I do feel like Ambrose hasn't really... He hasn't broken through to that next level part of his career, I don't think, uh, after having the, the championship, I don't know. Not feeling it as, as much as I thought it would, but I'm still happy that he, he, he has been the champion, you know. Um, not that I'm saying I think you should hand it around to everyone so that everyone has been the champion, I'm just saying that I feel like he deserved it and it's kind of cool, but I, I definitely think AJ Styles is the way to go and is probably going to be like that mainstay guy for hopefully the next couple of years. Hopefully he's got quite a few more years left in the tank because AJ Styles is just, I was, I was literally going to say phenomenal without even being uh, funny about it, but yeah. Uh, Smackdown didn't, I don't think I watched anything from Smackdown. Um, no, I didn't watch anything from Smackdown. I did watch Talking Smack though, the, the network show, which is uh, which is really good. you got Renee Young and Daniel Bryan and it's very unscripted and I really like that kind of loose feel to it. We had the little Daniel Bryan Miz altercation last week that went viral and everything. I saw Daniel Bryan on, uh, I think, Off the Ropes or something like that with Jonathan Coachman. And he said that it was planned that they were going to kind of, you know, bounce off each other a little bit and kind of, you know, get into a bit of an argument. But it was, it, it went as far as it was through a real kind of, you know, I mean, Brian really doesn't like the way Miz wrestles. And so he said that they know how to push each other's buttons. And so it was a very real situation. And he kind of walked off because he just, you know, felt like punching him and stuff. And uh, you can say, oh, this, oh it, they're just furthering the work. But I do believe it was genuine. Um, because, I mean, you know, you could see the tears in, in Miz's eyes when he was given that promo. And apparently now, uh, the word is backstage that they, they've said, right, let's just keep these guys away from each other because, you know, and like literally, like they're, they're, they're trying to just cut that off where it is because it's, it's making people think that Brian's going to come back. It's, it's kind of playing with, with people's thoughts and they don't want that, that focus on it. Miz is the Intercontinental Champion. He's going to, you know, defend the title. So they, they've kind of done that. And this week on Talking Smack, Brian addressed it and said, yeah, they're, they're just keeping us away from each other. You know, it was what it was. I'm, I'm apologizing. Uh, you know, to everyone for you know for for what I said and for me kind of instigating it and stuff like that. And on the way, on the way with the show, and I believe that I do believe that it was a thing that, that was born out of a real life thing. I mean, Brian said it on Talking Smack this week. He said what Miz was saying about me being a coward because you know I could just quit the WWE and go wrestle on the independents. It, it's true. It's what I feel about myself. I I do feel like a bit of a coward. So, and and I can tell when Brian is is telling the truth because he always seems like he's telling the truth. But. Um, yeah, uh, anyway, so there's that. But Talk is Back was really fun this week. We had uh, Heath Slater and Rhino, which was hilarious. Like, Heath Slater, I really enjoy his stuff, and I like where they're going with this free agent thing, but Rhino Man is such the perfect foil, the perfect kind of um, <laughs> straight man to Heath Ledger, just sitting there, you know, this massive guy, and he's just, I mean, there's the things that he's coming out with that were just so funny in the most subtle way to me anyway. Just all the little, the little kind of side comments that Rhino would throw in there and stuff, and... You know, what tag name would you have? And and he's like, well, Beauty and the Beast. And, and, <laughs> and Daniel Bryan's like, what? So you're saying that Heath Slater is beautiful? Is that why you wanted to team up with him? He's like, well, no, obviously 
he's the beast and I'm the beauty. <laughs> but he says it in a deadpan way. Like I just really, I really enjoyed that segment. I'm now, I'm so invested in Rhino and his Slayer as a team, which I never thought I'd say that. And Rhino even, even just kind of, you know, subtly kind of dropped this kind of thing where he's like, you know, I want to win the tag titles. I, I've never won a tag team championship in the U.S. before, so that's something that I really want to do. And and you know, just little things like that make you um, get behind characters, even though that the Talking Smack is kind of quasi. Kayfabe, kind of quasi lifting the curtain back. They kind of stay in character. They kind of don't. AJ Styles was on. That was kind of fun as well. But I really just enjoyed the the Talking Smack format. I think it was really good. I watched a bit of the Raw pre-show this week. It wasn't as enjoyable. It's more. It feels much more produced. Um, but they had an interview, and I don't like the digital set either. That's horrible. Much prefer the physical set of the Talking Smack show. Uh, they interviewed Sasha Banks. She was actually there to talk about how she's you know she's 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 out, but she's going to come back for Charlotte and stuff. So I don't know whether. Sasha Banks is going to be ready sooner than they thought, and we'll be seeing Sasha come back for the title before Bailey gets a shot at it. Uh, Bailey was on Raw doing stuff with the New Day. Uh, I like that she was over; people were were cheering for her and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> if I'd enjoy her being with New Day permanently. I, they're just a bit too much for me. Uh, but she definitely slots into that kind of, I think. So uh, I, I did watch that match. And I loved the finish. She did this w weird thing where she twisted her arm around Dana Brooke and then pulled her in for the Bailey to Bailey. It was a, such a sweet spot. Never seen anything like it. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's just such a nice little smooth, flourishing kind of, um, uh, what's the word, um, connection to go into the finisher. There's another lead into the finisher. Uh, and I thought that was awesome. Cruiserweight Classic, another fantastic episode. We're now in the quarterfinals. This week we had uh, Akira Tozawa versus Grand Metallic. Awesome match, really, really good. I loved seeing those two two styles go together. Akira Tozawa really got over and was getting over. Me and Connie have watched all of the Cruiserweight Classic together, and I loved how she was getting behind Akira Tozawa because initially she didn't like him, but she was won over uh, every time that she saw him. And this time when we watched it, she was into it. She was laughing at him, doing the ha ah, ah. ha, and she was she was she was wow, he's entertaining. She said. I loved, I loved how she also had clocked that his finisher was the German suplex and that he had won every match he had with that German suplex. So when he went for the German suplex, she was like, oh, oh, you know, she was getting into it. And then he hits the German suplex, one, two, Grand Metalli kicks out and Connie was like, what? And I just, I almost felt like a kid again because I was like, that's what it's all about. It's building up those stories and just all, that's that tiny detail of noticing that someone had won a couple of matches with the same move and then someone kicks out of it and it's like holy shit, you know. And I loved, I loved Connie's reaction to that. It was a really good match. Um, and Grand Metallic moves forward. Um, next match was Brian Kendrick versus uh, the, the Golden Boy, <laughs> literally uh, Kota Ibushi, whose uh, whose moves are named the Golden Star. This Golden Star that. Um, and that was another great match. I, I really, I probably. Yeah, my favorite match of the the episode by far. One of my favorite matches of the entire tournament. I love the tournament. I love how they've done it. I I love seeing all these guys I've never seen before, and some guys I have seen before, and and you know just the matches have all been great. Or you know, most of them have. There's been some duds, but most of them have been solid at least to great to amazing. And then just seeing you know the the brackets just just break down week by week, and it's getting closer and closer. I love tournaments. And I'm so happy that they did this. The way they did it, it's more legit. It's more about wrestling. The commentary is is next level with Mara Ronaldo and, and Daniel Bryan talking about the wrestling. You know, just focusing on the story of the match, not the, you know, the all the the extraneous bullshit that they go about on on the main shows. Though, you know, the, the commentary on the main shows is getting better. I feel uh, with guys like Corey Graves uh, coming in, but still, the commentary, especially in the main event, I thought was f phenomenal because. And even Brian Kendrick, his work was just next level. I, I felt in in the match because he he the story he told in that match against Koto Ibushi, he was outmatched. He, he there was this younger guy who who hits hard, has got more gas in the tank, and, and Brian Kendrick was doing everything he could to kind of just just get an in to to somehow get the upper hand. And what he ended up doing was uh, doing this neck breaker on on Koto Ibushi over the uh, the metal um, uh, beam. That holds a turnbuckle to the ring post, you know, and I'd never seen that before. And they talked about in the commentary how Kota Ibushi has a surgically repaired neck. 
just brilliant storytelling. And then and then Kendrick's going after the neck and he's wrenching his head and as he's doing it, I'm feeling like, oh my god, you know, it's just it was perfect wrestling storytelling as far as I'm concerned. I thought Kendrick was phenomenal in the match because he was doing stuff that, you know, perhaps a wrestler wouldn't want to do in a cruiserweight classic where uh, you know, you're doing these fancy moves and you, you're showing off what you can do. Kendrick wasn't doing that. He was rolling out the ring, trying to goad Koto Ibushi out, trying to get the easy way to kind of, you know, get an advantage and things like that. He wasn't being too flashy, but it worked for the story. Uh, the German suplex off the second rope from the outside of the ring to the inside. Never seen that before. Awesome. Uh, the finish, you know, I almost for like a split second bought that Kendrick might win it. And then we get, you know, the, the finish of the match and the emotional uh, moment at the end. And I have to say, again, the, the pre-match kind of video package, they gave Brian Kendrick like 30 seconds to talk, and he made it sound like it was the biggest match of his life, saying how everyone in the tournament wants to win, I need to win. You know, these guys have got their whole career ahead of them, this might be my last shot, I need to win this. It just makes it feel so much more important than a regular match, or quarterfinal match, you know, and I can't credit Brian Kendrick enough um, for being a phenomenal performer from that promo, to the match itself and and showing that emotion at the end and Daniel Bryan who is very close friends of Brian Kendrick they, they you know they started wrestling together had their first match together came out and hugged him very emotional moment and they had the great the, the backstage promo on that was on the WWE.com YouTube as well you know that, that's what wrestling is about is getting to that emotion uh, and making it mean something and, and when the tears start running you know how how much it means to people, um, both in the crowd, but also the wrestlers themselves. And that, to me, is where wrestling crosses the line and becomes something pretty special. So, yeah, the Cruiserweight Classic has been unbelievable. Another great episode this week. Next week, we got Zack Sabre Jr., Noam Dar, and TJ Perkins versus Rich Swan. So, yeah, I definitely think we're going to be seeing in the final... Uh, I don't know who's on which side of the brackets, but, yeah, I I'm thinking either Grand Metallic and Koto Ibushi, or Zack Sabre Jr. and Koto Ibushi. I'm not sure which side they're on, but that's kind of my guess for the main event. Graham Metellic, credit to him as well. His, his high flying and his, his, his kind of, his balance doing that stuff, like walking along the top rope and doing these moves is, is phenomenal. He, he seems like he just really has a handle on that Lucha style. Like we had like Sin Cara come in a few years ago and you know, apparently he was great, but he, he did not translate over well and, and was, was botching a lot. But Graham Metallic is just there every beat. And I thought he was, he's, he's been great so far. So I think that Grand Metallic and Koto Ibushi in the final would be a great mix of styles. You know, uh, you know Mexico, Japan, I think that would be really great. But the same could work with, with Zack Sabre Jr. as well. We'll see what happens. Uh, podcasts. I've, I've started listening to the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling Torch kind of post-Monday Night Raw podcast. They're interesting. He gets calls on, speaks about stuff. They've been kind of tiding me over when there's kind of not-so-interesting episodes from Stone Cold Steve Austin. I listened to the Austin podcast with The Revival brilliant podcast i mean it made me a much bigger fan of the revival than i already was um here in their influences why they do what they do where they've come from where they want to go how they've managed to kind of make a name for themselves when nothing was planned for them in nxt uh and i really want to go go now and see their two out of three falls match with american alpha because apparently that's another good one that they've had um but it was it was great to hear austin talk to them and kind of tell them how much he thought of their wrestling and their match at TakeOver and at one point he even said that you know yeah the Hollywood Blondes were great but, but you guys are, are that much better and you just hear them going like oh like, you know they, they're just in heaven and so that was really really cool um, uh, another podcast uh, I've mentioned it every episode so far but uh, another Wrestling Friends podcast from uh, Flash Morgan Webster uh, this week he, he spoke with a female wrestler on the UK scene a Welsh a Welsh girl by the name of Nixon Newell, quite a, a unique name. Uh, that was a lot of fun. She was uh, like very Welsh. Like it, it made me feel nostalgic about about my home country, her, her accent and everything. But um, she had an interesting story, uh, and it was another good kind of conversational chat podcast, which uh, which uh, Morgan Webster does very well. So that's about it, I think. Uh, wrestling wise, is there anything else I can think of that's happened this week? No, nope, we got backlash coming in 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 uh, about a week and a half. Looking forward to that. I'll, I'll talk about that more when we get to it. And that's about it. Yeah, leave me thoughts down below if you have anything you want to say. Uh, I love comments, and the more comments I get on this, the more I'll, I'm inclined to keep doing these wrestling uh, videos. I'm kind of going back to my roots of this channel. Um, but man, there's, there's a shit ton of good wrestling going down there. It really, really is. And it's a pretty good time to be a wrestling fan, I think. Uh, still haven't got time to watch full SmackDowns, full Raws, but. Um, you know, the, the content they're putting out now is pretty, is pretty, pretty good. 
So that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> so you might say he's a really nice guy, really. But if you fucking don't catch it with me, he says he's really cool. But I think he's a tool. <laughs>